What's going on, y'all? It is week four of the APDL, and we just got done playing our game against the Lottie Daddies, a.k.a. Uh, coached by Quincy. Um, first and foremost, my name's Josh, JK, coach of the Goldenrod City Goomies. This adorable little boy right here uh, is on a win streak. We're 3-0 and here, moving into week four, and uh, very excited to see what we can do against one of our, our good uh close rivals uh cap box 1987 uh and his front office of shenanigans and hooligans um in all seriousness super excited to play this game and to play against quincy our games are always close um and there's definitely a, a little bit of a rivalry uh just like sean you know um definitely always looking forward to playing um to, to playing quincy so um a disclaimer, there was a little bit of a technical glitch with Showdown um, that uh, didn't affect the game at all. We were able to just kind of wait it out and reconnect and get it going. Um, but I, it did kind of take the wind um, maybe out of out of Quincy's sails. I don't want to bury the lead a little bit, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to it um, in the game. Uh, first and foremost, let's go through Team Builder. Um, this week, uh, we're bringing some familiar faces. Uh, there's nothing too crazy going on here, but we do have some awesome uh, role players and some some really good offense, uh, as well as like some some rock solid defense this week. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, been a follower and a fan, um, I definitely have a more defensive play style. And I like to build my rosters around um, not dying. So um, for this week, uh, you know, one of the things that I was really scared of, really wanted to prep for was a Solosis that was, you know, maybe going to set up use Calm Mind or uh, just kind of be like the big special threat from Quincy. Um, so Swiper the Nicket is here to soak hits and just laugh in a Solosis's face. Um so Assault Vest on this thing and Max Special Defense actually just means that Shadow Ball does nothing. Uh, and Psychic doesn't affect me because we're Dark type. So it's kind of the perfect counter to uh, to the Solosis uh, as long as we keep our Assault Vest. Um, knockoff is the best move in the game. Prove me wrong. Um, foul play is really fun if we um, get into a situation where it's uh, some you know a Pokemon switching in he's got a lot of attackers foul play does a lot when you're an attacking Pokemon um, so that's kind of a neat little uh, uh, utility but also just like hey I can fight back using foul play um, and then snarl and mudshot I think are just super cool tech moves um, snarl doing damage and lowering that special attack stat is really cool especially in the 1v1 when like a Solosius wants to uh, wants to set up on me, I just kind of snarl in its face and say, I don't care, come at me. Um, and then mud shots there for some speed control. So really, really cool. I The more and more I build teams, I'm like, man, Nicket is like, I haven't gotten to use it a lot, but it's a really awesome uh, uh, Pokemon that's filling a really cool role uh, as we move Tentacool into a more offensive um, position in the team. Um, speaking of offense, Jack Black, the Pancham, again, is back with a Life Orb and Iron Fist. Um, max HP and, and attack. There's really not much to say about this guy. Um, Pancham hits hard. And Drain Punch uh, gives me sustain over long periods of time. Kind of helps negate the Life Orb damage, which is great. Fire Punch blows up Pharaoh Seed. Um, so does Drain Punch, but, you know, Fire Punch is there as another coverage move. Um, Bulldoze is the only ground type move I get uh, that's worth running. And uh, he's got a lot of weakness against ground, so I figured I'll bring it. It's good against Alolan Geodude. Uh, it's good against a couple of other things on his team. Might as well bring it. Also, the speed control is kind of nice. Uh, and then again, knockoff, best move in the game. 
I, I don't have to say anything more to that. Um, I mentioned Tentacool is kind of moving into a more offensive role. We brought in defensive in week one, and we've kind of switched and never looked back. Um, so this week, it is Choice Scarfed, uh, Clear Body like always. Special Attack and Speed are the two um, stats we dumped everything into. Um, this will speed tie his fastest Mon, which would be Mankey, if it's got a Scarf. Uh, if it doesn't have a scarf, Tentacool will be the fastest thing in the game. Um, so we're, we're hoping to be uh, using our speed and, and using that advantage uh, to fire off some really really good hits across the team. Um, Scald, Sludge Bomb, Dazzling Gleam for the Mankey and the Dratini. Uh, and then Rapid Spin, like always, just in case he wants to get cheeky with hazards. Uh, circling back to a little bit more of the defensive side of the team, uh, Benedict, the execute, and uh, I love this guy. Like, bulky grass type, working wonders. Um, we're running the Citrus Berry Harvest set again. A uh, little bit different on the move pool, but not, not too bad. Um, max HP and defense, this thing will take hits like no tomorrow. Uh, Giga Drain and Leech Seed, uh, well, actually Giga Drain's its only attacking move. Um, Leech Seed, Toxic, and Protect. I really need to get rid of Fair Seed before I put Execute in because I really, I can't touch it. I, I just, I can't touch it. Um, but once Fair Seed is gone, uh, Execute just kind of sits in front of all of his physical threats and uh, is ready to 1v1 pretty well, actually. Um, no substitute this week. Uh, we definitely are more of a just a streamlined defensive set. You know, Toxic is there if he wants to set up uh, so we can whittle things down. Leech Seed, uh, you know, passive recovery is always great. And then the Harvest with Protect um, should give us a lot of sustain uh, over time. So uh, really like the Execute set. It is bulkier than you would expect. Um, Speaking of bulk, Grimer Goop, uh, he's our Eviolite Mon again, and we're never giving it up because Sticky Hold is the best ability in combination with Eviolite. Um, max HP and Dispense also uh, on the Grimer. Um, rocking the relaxed nature, so we're sacrificing speed. He's run Trick Room in the past, so I want to be able to, like, if he sets up Trick Room, Grimer's great to throw in there. Um, poison Jab is just my best stab move. Uh, I don't want to run Gunk Shot and risk, risk the miss, even though it is 40 base power more, more powerful. Um, poison Jab does just as good. Uh, Fire Punch is there so that I can actually attack the Pharaoh Seed. Um, Giga Drain, uh, just good kind of recovery. He's got a couple of water types on his team, and then Shadow Snake for priority. Um, so again, kind of a great defensive goop, uh, really walls out his physical threats, um, and will, will do its best, uh, if it comes up against the Solosis. Uh, and then finally, Esmeralda, the Natu, um, I, Natu is so cool. Like the amount of different things that I can do with Natu is like really, really neat. And I'm starting to realize that, you know, Yes, Natu is a great special offensive choice. You know, it's got a decent move pool, um, good stab types. Uh, you know, Psychic Stab is just awesome. Um, it hits hard just about across the board. But Natu's utility is insane. Um, so this week, we are running Magic Bounce, like always. And we're bulky and speedy. So I just kind of decided that we were going to run bulky support, um, bulky fast support or fat fast. I'm calling it fat fast support. Um, so a lot of HP investment, uh, max out the speed, go timid, get as much out of it as I can. Uh, we'll outspeed everything on his team, barring scarfs. Uh, and then we're going to have uh, Thunder Wave and Reflect uh, alongside a Light Clay this week. Um, I thought about doing dual screens, but like really he's got like one, maybe two special attackers on the team. Uh, I really just need to watch out for Solosis, and I kind of figured last minute almost that like we've built a Nicket that can 1v1 it for sure if I've got an Assault Vest on. Um, if it's not, it, like if I get knocked off, there's a chance I 1v1 depending on what moveset he brings. Um, 
and and you know we're just gonna kind of take it on blind faith that we can do it so i figured you know what i don't need light screen what else can i do and he's got a lot of stuff that likes to set up and like shell smash for speed or dragon dance um so speed control kind of a theme here with bulldoze and mud shot uh oh and oh by the way thunder wave so natu is this really cool um just like neat support pokemon this week and i really love the move set and what it could do uh and i think it could be super impactful so that's the team this week i really love it i think it is um uh, on par with what we need and, and kind of how well we're team building lately uh and i think that this will definitely give us a great shot to win so before we get into the game let's talk about keys to the game um because that is really important um and we're gonna say you know okay our keys to the game bird is the word um and referring to not to and how cool of a utility set that we're bringing this week um so bird's the word we're probably going to lead not to regardless of what he's bringing just because one i'll be faster than everything again barring a scarf and really like Mankey is the only scarf thing that i think he would bring the litten has been uh more of a defensive pokemon for him um and that's the other mon that has base 70 speed on his team so um, I'll be faster than everything unless it's got a scarf and I think it's a really good shot to uh, to lead um, Key to the game number two bird is the word uh, Or after bird is the word excuse me um, Key number two is tear down the setup um, He's got a lot of Pokemon that would like to hit some type of a setup move whether it's calm mind on the solosis dragon dance on the dratini or the totodile um you know uh, shell smash on the binnacle he he's just got like a roster full of pokemon that want to set up um so our our response to that is to um stay on the offensive and do not switch out even if the matchup seems bad or if I have a better defensive option coming in because I don't want to just let him set up for free. Um, I've got some good things in the form of speed control and in, in the form of just raw speed with Tentacool and Natu. So if I have to, um, I'm just going to let stuff go down um, to be able to either drop speed by one stage or paralyze it or whatever it might be. Um, or just hit it really hard and then be able to let Tentacool with the Scarf come in and, and clean it up. So uh, we're not going to let anything set up for free. We're not switching out in the face of one of those Pokemon, no matter how bad the matchup might seem. Uh, and we're just going to rock it. And then number three, um, Panch them in the mouth. Uh, this is kind of just a play on words on Punch them in the mouth. Uh, Panch them and Drain Punch and Fire Punch just kind of wreck his entire team. Um there are mons where we just straight up kill no questions asked and then there are rolls or at least damage in like the 80s and 90s percent uh depending on what move i use so we're just gonna you know rely on panjam as kind of like our main offensive threat like it is every week um and really just like hey lean into it this week and just go for it so those are our keys to the game let's jump into the game uh recap like i said we have nicket our special wall execute one of our two defensive walls panjam main physical offense grimer the other physical defensive wall um and then we have uh tentacool who is our fast special offense and then natu which is our bulky fast support pokemon uh, on quincy's side of the field we have the binnacle and the Totodile, Solosis, Dratini, Mankey, and Ferroseed. So um, a lot of those things that I said like to set up, he brought mostly all of them. Uh, he brought just about every single one. So what that means is number one, we got to stick to our game plan. And number two, we cannot let him set up for free, um, which I guess is the same thing as sticking to our game plan. Um, also looking at this, I don't see any Littens, so um, like Panjam never has to really worry about his attack dropping. Um, Ferroseed is his main wall. Beyond that, I don't see a lot of defense on this team, um, which means a couple of things. Number one, uh, we gotta we gotta 
get through the Pharisee before execute just kind of comes in and just sits there. Uh, and then number two, um, I, I, I really, like, I see some frail stuff on this team. Like, Binnacle's defenses are not good, especially if it shell smashes and doesn't have a white herb. Um, Dratini's not the bulkiest boy ever, and Mankey is, like, super frail, too. Um, so I, I'm looking at team preview and I'm like confident, but I'm not overconfident and definitely not cocky because Quincy, if we've learned anything from our games in the past, uh, runs weird stuff and, uh, we gotta be, gotta be prepared for that. So, um, let's get into the game and we'll kind of talk through things. Like I said, uh, from this preview, I was debating whether or not I went not to or tentacle first, um, just I figured Mankey has a scarf that's kind of the, the little cup staple. Um, but I didn't think, excuse me, I didn't think he'd lead it. So I'm, I'm pretty safe kind of going, well, I, you know, he either leads like Binnacle or Pharisee and tries to get up hazards. So I'm just going to lead Natu. We've got Magic Bounce um, and maybe get a Reflect and then a Thunder Wave off or something like that. Or you turn out uh, if it's like a really bad matchup. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. Um, music's off here. So he actually leads Dratini and Draco Meteors. <laughs> what? So remember when I said Quincy ran weird stuff? This is prime example of something that I was not prepared for. Um, thank God we put the HP investment into Natu because we live <laughs> on 16%. Um, but like a couple of things we find out right off the bat. Number one, this is at least mixed. Um, it's at, at least a mixed Dratini, if not a totally special Dratini. Um, and number two, it is scarfed, which is very, very good information. So um, we live <laughs> the Draco Meteor, which like definitely caught me off guard on, on turn one. And we were able to get a reflect up, which is great. Um, he ends up switching out, which is a, is a, a totally fine play by him. Um, and I just thought, you know what, we're going to go for Thunder Wave. Actually, no, excuse me. How? What? Okay. So we... Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. We both switch out. Um, I switched into Nicket because we take like 10% off of a mixed... Dratini uh, Draco Meteor if he goes for it again. I know he's locked in so like Nicket is like a super free switch uh, and I either take the Draco Meteor super well or we swap out and then I have a knockoff user in, in front of a Reflect. Um, looking at the rest of his team like Solosis obviously is the other special threat. All the physical threats uh, are everything else on his team is physical most likely. Um, but we have a reflect up, so I feel good about sending in my uh, my Nicket, who does not have good physical defense. Um, so right off the bat, um, he sends out Fair Seed, and I want to knock off the EV Light immediately. So we actually just trade knockoffs, and we're we're in a pretty okay spot. Like we lose the Assault Vest, which sucks. Um, it means I, the one v one against Salocious later is a little harder, uh, but I can still two shot it most likely with a combination of like uh um uh knock off and then like a, a a foul play or something and then snarl helps too uh i just have to be really careful and i can't get get in over my head um so we trade knockoffs that's great Pharisee much more frail once that uh evil light is gone but still still a super bulky boy that we have to deal with um i don't really want to stay in so I'm going to go into Natu thinking that he's going to try and set up hazards. Um, I figured like Spikes was going to come or uh, a Leech Seed. Uh, and we actually read that with a Magic Bounce and, and we uh, are able to bounce back the Leech Seed. I wish it would have been Spikes because that would have been super helpful later in the game. Uh, but um, we're able to avoid the Leech Seed and, and you know get our, our Natu in for free. Now there's a couple of things here. Number one, I uh, will die if he hits me with anything. Like it's, it, he's got knockoff, we know, I'm, there's no way I'm living that. I also don't wanna let him get spikes up. Um, so I don't really wanna switch out. 
Um, and, and I think that there's a pretty decent shot that he actually swaps. Um, you know, I, yes, he could go for knockoff, but he can't use any of his hazards. So maybe he wants to, to go out into something else. Um, regardless, I'm just going to fire off a Thunder Wave and just kind of see what happens. Um, best case scenario, he switches into something else, and I paralyze that. Worst case scenario, we paralyze the Pharisee and die, and you know we still have four turns of Reflect to uh, kind of just rock and see what we have. So, not going to overthink it. We go for our utility move. He stays in, clicks knock off, and we die. So, not the end of the world. This is a pretty free spot to bring in Panjam. Um, this was an aggressive move from me to go straight into Panjam, but Pharisee doesn't have an Eviolite anymore. And I have two moves that do like 90 some percent damage to, to a Pharisee. So it's a roll on Drain Punch, and it is a guaranteed kill with Fire Punch. And I got a little lucky here, and I went for Drain Punch, and we got it. I um, I didn't want to go to Fire Punch in case he swapped, and then I like didn't get a good hit on something coming in, just because you know it's not stab. It's still a good move against a lot of what he has, but Drain Punch is just the best move that I have, and. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm able to, to get a, a big hit off. Um, I don't remember what the calc was or how close of a roll it was, but I did know um, at the minimum I was going to do in the 80s, and at the maximum it should have been in you know the mid to high 90s. So it, it was a roll for sure, and we did get a little lucky here. Um, but uh, a really good... Um, really good attack off and we knocked down his biggest wall and we also this also means that like execute can come in and pretty much sit in front of everything maybe not the solosis but i'm really not scared of totodile or binnacle mankey i'm a scarfed mankey is not really too uh scary either and uh, Dratini is mixed, probably. Um, so I, I, I maybe want to get rid of Dratini before we before we swap into the egg. But this is a really good first step. Um, we do take a little Iron Barbs and Life Orb damage, but then he sends in Solosis, and I'm very confused by this play. Like I'm I'm very confused why he chose this turn to send in Mitochondria. Um, in fact, I want to do the calc here with you all, um, because I'm just I'm just very not sure why he decided to do this, um, and we have already seen the pokey paste. So I'm gonna grab his exact um, his exact stat distribution. It did have a little defense, uh, which is interesting. Whoops. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Um, yeah, knockoff was 118 to 139. So I, I, I'm not sure why he chose to, to go into into, into Solosis here. Um, he also, let me check the speed here. Um, yeah, I'm, he's got 76 speed and I have 122 and that's, you know, both are uninvested. I'm just, you know, base stat of 43 and base of 20 for him. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just really confused why, why he chose to go into Solosis here. Um, cause it's, it's kind of a throwaway to be, to be honest with you. Um, no spoilers or anything, but we're going to click knockoff and it's going to die. Like, after the knockoff from the Nicket onto the Pharisee, I knew he couldn't have uh, an Eviolite. So, it, it's just free. It's just a free kill for me. Um, and, and we're kind of cruising. Next up, he sends in Mankey, which this will be good for us to kind of figure out um, number one, 
uh, what his investment is. If he's jolly, timid, I'm not timid. If he's jolly, adamant, uh, scarfed, banded, life orb, whatever. Um, but I'm I'm fairly certain I don't die to anything from this Mankey, especially with a reflect up. So I'm just gonna click drain punch. Um, he's gonna U-turn out. We lose 10%, which is. Uh, not enough to really figure out what uh, the Mankey is. At this point, I still assume he's Scarfed. Um, he goes out into Dratini, and we Drain Punch, and it's a one-shot kill. Um, again, I'm not sure on the roll, so let's look at what that was, because I'm, I'm really interested, actually. Um, let's see here. Boom. And this was a... a it was a mixed Dratini, um, mainly special offensive, though. Uh, so Dratini, Dratini here. Oh, the Drain Punch roll was 129 to 152, so always guaranteed. Uh, Dratini had Draco Meteor, Extreme Speed, Thunder, and HP Grass, and was Scarfed. So a really cool set, just unfortunate that um, Pancham's a monster, and uh, we were able to... Uh, able to, to kill it out so now after after uh that play showdown kind of like crashed um i have no idea what happened but it said that for both of us that um we were waiting for the other opponent like it was like you know waiting for uh cat fox or waiting for jk uh, we were talking on discord as this was happening like do we restart the game do we replay it back Thank God we didn't because it showdown like just reconnected out of nowhere uh, and we were able to get in. But it definitely stalled things a little bit uh, to where I don't want to say like the momentum was taken out or like whatever because I'm, like, I'm in a pretty commanding spot here. Uh, and I really didn't want to have to replay the game. Um, although knowing the calcs so far, it, it wouldn't have been too too bad i think we would have been pretty safe if we had to replay it uh but luckily showdown reconnected and we were able to to keep going uh but just a weird bug um so he sends in anime protagonist the total dial uh again we're just going to click drain punch waterfall does a ton of damage um but again it was something where i, I knew for a fact that i was not gonna die in that moment uh because I figured he was the Dragon Dance set, and at worst, he would have a Life Orb. Um, didn't think he would have uh, a Choice Band, so I knew Waterfall would do um, enough damage to where I'm not going to die. So, I figured, correctly, that it would take two hits for me to kill, for, for Pancham to go down um, from the last three mods that he had. So, we just go for Drain Punch. We narrowly narrowly miss the kill um which again i think i think i knew that uh let's see totodial 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 let's see here live editing my friends totodial dragon dance little cup Drain Punch, yeah, was going to do, this is an Eviolate, we want a Life Orb, just in case. Um, Drain Punch was going to do 91 to 108, it is the calc that I saw. Um, so, a good chance that we kill, but not guaranteed. He lives on three, which is great. Uh, and then he is able to just waterfall me down. Um, and the sheer force protects him from the life orb damage. So that's really cool. Um, so uh, Pancham goes down. Uh, however, we have priority in Grimer. And we get a shadow sneak off to uh, take down the total dial. So now we're in a fantastic spot to where Grimer and Execute just kind of win. And if the Mankey is not Scarf, Tentacle is the fastest thing. Uh, and I have Nicket to either knock off or just get sacked or whatever it might be. Um, so I, I'm feeling really confident, feeling really good about where we're at. Uh, Grimer can stay in. We take that Earthquake pretty okay. 
uh, and hit a poison jab. And we learn one thing from this turn. Um, we learn that this Mankey is without a shadow of a doubt banded. So um, it's week four, and differential doesn't mean shit, but I want to preserve it uh, regardless. So uh, I swap out. Um, I'm like, oh, okay, I know he's going to click Earthquake, and a crit does 26% damage to, to Eggs Benedict. Giga Drain kills both of his last two Pokemon regardless. It, it just, you know, the, the calc on the on the uh, Binnacle was like guaranteed kill, uh, and Mankey's low enough to where Giga Drain just wins no matter what. So um, the crit, inconsequential. We... Uh, we're able to uh, knock out the binnacle with a Giga Drain, and, uh, and then he U-turns. Oh, Choice Banded U-turn does a lot. Um, we live on seven. Uh, Citrus Berry pops, Giga Drain goes off, and we're able to uh, get a 4-0 victory against Cat Fox and the Lottie Daddies. Um, solid win for us to be honest with you um you know i uh, i'm very proud of how we piloted this game uh i don't really see uh, you know on a watch back many mistakes that i made um and I, I i really think that we had a strong game plan going into the game um and we executed on that you know we not to i guess like the utility was limited just I wasn't expecting to get hit with a Draco Meteor right off the bat. So, um, you know, after turn one, having its HP down to, like, in the teens, in the red already, uh, definitely limited what I was able to do. But the Reflect in the beginning of the game was huge. And uh, I think, like, the game plan behind it was solid. So, um, really, really proud of how we played. We get a really good 4-0 against a team uh, that is scary and could have been a trap game for sure. Um, and, uh, we're 4-0, baby. We are, are 4-0 moving into the last week of the regular season. We're at the top of the power rankings. We, I think, are, are, we have a chance, and I'm going to knock on wood to end the season undefeated, and, uh, you know, we're going to do everything we can to make that happen. Um, like I said, really proud of the team building this week. The game plan was solid. Quincy played great. Uh, aside from that Solosis play, like I, I, I still am not sure what he was thinking there. Uh, maybe he thought I didn't have knockoff, but I've run it every single week. I've brought Panjam because um, it's the best move in the game. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think that might have been a throwaway. Maybe he was just trying to burn that turn of Reflect and he just like, thought that Solosis was the the low-hanging fruit for uh, for his team. Um, and if something was going to die, it was going to be that. I don't know. I um, have to maybe maybe wait for his video later this week to, to see what his thought process was. Um, but nonetheless, great game. Always fun to play against Quincy. Always scary to play against Quincy. He's so good, so creative. Uh, but we're able to come out on top this week with a good 4-0. And uh, the Goomies are now 4-0. Uh, which is super cool moving into the last week of the season and uh, getting ready for playoffs. We're feeling really, really good. At this point, I don't think we can lose the Johto division, so I think we should get the number one seed. Um, unless we lose to... Um, let me look here. Let's just, let's just see here. I think we're guaranteed a victory or a, a one seed because Peyton won. Actually, okay, so we need to, um, we need to win, and or we would need to lose, and Peyton would need to win, and um, do extremely well with the differential. And let me, let me see if I can pull up the, uh, not the schedule, the standings here. Actually, it's closer than I thought. Actually, oh, wow. Okay, so after this game, we got a 5-0, he got a 4-0. Or no, re reverse. We got a 4-0, he got a 5-0. So our differential is actually going to be the same It'll at plus 13. And I'll be 4-0 and, and he'll be 3-1. and one. <laughs> So we would need to lose 
at, against Jackson, who um, has not won yet this season. And Jamestown, Peyton, would need to beat... Who is his last week opponent? Who oh, he, he plays Edmonton this week. So um, Peyton would need to beat Sean, and I would need to lose against Jackson for us to lose the Johto division. So it's actually like uh, it, it, it will come down to the wire. It's a lot closer than I thought. Um, I didn't realize Peyton's differential was so good. Um, so we're in a really good spot to try and win the Johto division. Um which is really exciting, uh, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do that, carry in the one seed into the playoffs, uh, and hopefully try and win our second championship. So um, I've rambled long enough at the end of this video, uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back maybe with Power Rankings video, maybe maybe guest appearing on that this week. I, I don't know who's going to record it, so that'll be a... a a game time decision maybe it'll be a canadian power rankings or something like that um but if not you might see me there uh anyways thanks so much uh this is a 36 minute video and uh needs to be done so um thanks for all the support and uh go goomies <laughs>